DaVinci Resolve for noobs. Of all the features in DaVinci Resolve, this one right here is probably the most confusing on the edit page. Let me show you what it does. Some of you know you've got three different modes that you can edit in right here above your timeline. The selection mode, the trim edit mode, and the blade mode. And when you click any one of these, it switches in between the three. But there's a fourth mode called dynamic trim mode that when you select it, it seems to add on top of the other mode, not switch from it. And it does weird things like it turns your playhead yellow and moves it to a completely different spot in your timeline. Let me show you why. A lot of times you might just go through and rough cut the footage and need to go back and adjust these cuts a little bit more precisely. If you activate dynamic trim mode, what it's gonna do is allow you to do that in real time while listening to your project. And it's gonna use keyboard shortcuts to do that. With that mode turned off, J, K, and L keys on your keyboard, J makes your playhead play backwards, K makes it stop, L makes it play forward, and when you hit J or L more than once, it'll play back even faster the more you hit it, and K will stop it. And hitting the spacebar will either play or stop playing your project. But if you activate dynamic trim mode, what it's gonna do is jump to the nearest edit point, and there's a reason it does that. If you select any one of these edit points just by putting your mouse cursor over it until it becomes a double bracket and left clicking, you'll see it highlights it in green. Then if you use J, K, and L, let's go with L, which is the forward button, it will jump to to that split and it'll start playing and magnetize that split point and drag it along with it, moving that cut point in real time so you can listen and hear where you want that split to happen. Hitting K stops it and hitting J will back it up and the same thing if you hit J or K more than once, it'll speed up the playback. And as you can see, that split point followed that playhead. It was magnetized to it. And then once you have that edit point where you want it, the spacebar does something different too. If you hit spacebar to play, it's going to jump backwards a few seconds and play through that split, play a few seconds past it, and then stop and put the playhead back on the split. The reason it's doing that is so you can listen to or monitor to check that splice point and see if you liked where it was. And if you don't, you can use J, K, and L to start moving that splice point forward or backwards stop it with the K button and hit spacebar again to preview that splice and see if it works better at that position. That's all dynamic trim mode really does. And if you want to change the spacebar settings for how far it jumps back and then plays through afterwards and stops, just go up to DaVinci Resolve and click on your preferences, go over to user and go down to editing. And you will see right here, you have pre-roll and post-roll time. By default, they're actually set for two seconds. I keep mine at five. Pre-roll is how far back before the edit point it's going to jump in frames or seconds. And the post-roll is how long it's going to play after that edit point before it stops and jumps back right to that edit point. I know this can still be confusing if you have any questions, feel free to ask me down in the comments section.